Hello everyone, welcome to MESS e-learning channel. So, we have up till now studied a few properties of nanomaterials, the methods of synthesis of nanomaterials, the method of characterization of nanomaterials and the application of nanomaterials. Before proceeding further in this new video, let us have a quick recap of the subtopics that we have covered in this chapter namely nanoscience and nanotechnology. So, the topics that we have covered up till now are these. These are the topics. First of all, we have done the introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology. This was followed by a short introduction to the concept of surface to volume ratio in nanomaterials. Then the two main approaches that are used for the synthesis of nanomaterials. Then we had the important tools in the nanomaterials that is specifically the scanning electron microscope. This was followed by another important tool that was the transmission electron microscope followed by another tools that were actually based on scanning probe microscopy specifically the scanning tunneling microscope and the atomic force microscope. This was followed by the synthesis methods of nanomaterials and in this particular video we are going to look at the very first part of the applications of nanomaterials which is one of the most important part of the nanosynthesis and the study of nanomaterials. Cutting tools made of nanocrystalline materials have actually a much larger life and that is basically because of they are much harder and they are actually wear resistant. Over here you have an example of a tool. This is the edge of the cutting tool and this image over here, these two images over here are nothing but the zoom in views of this or rather the enlarged view of this surfaces and as you can check it for yourself from the images that there are diamond structures in both of them and because of this it so happens that this particular cutting tool due to its nanocrystalline property will be more resistant to wear and tear and that is basically a property required for a cutting tool. We now move to the next application of nanomaterials. especially insulating materials. Nanocrystalline materials that are actually synthesized by the sole gel method are called as aerogels. Now, this aerogels are highly porous, but at the same time they are very light and also they are thermally insulating and they can actually improve the performance of transducers. Here is an example of a cellulose aerogel fiber and this finds an application once again in a transducer and it can actually improve the efficiency of a transducer. We now move to the next application of nanomaterials. Here is another application of nanocrystalline materials. Unlike normal ceramics, the nanocrystalline ceramics have very good formability and machinability. Not only that, but they have excellent physical properties, chemical properties and mechanical properties. So, here is an example of nanocrystalline ceramic microparticles of alumina, zirconia and silica. We now move to the next application of nanomaterials and this application is nothing but the electrochromic materials or the electrochromic displays. Now, electrochromic devices display information by changing color on the application of a voltage. Now, if this electrochromic display device is made from a nanomaterial, then we have an improved resolution, an improved brightness 
and also uh, improved contrast as compared with conventional electrochromic devices. We now move to the next very important property of a nanomaterial and that is a pollutant eliminator. All nanomaterials basically due to their enhanced chemical activity which is actually influenced by their nano size, they can act as a catalyst to remove from the atmosphere pollutants such as nalidixic acid, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide to name a few and due to this it so happens that the environment becomes free of these particular pollutants. So, here is an example of one such application. In this example what we have is nothing but uh, basically TiO2, titanium dioxide, iron oxide and silver based nanocrystalline heterostructure for the photocatalytic degradation of a pollutant from the atmosphere. We now move to another application of nanomaterials and this application is basically higher power magnets. Nanocrystalline materials if they are actually used in the making of magnets then such magnets will actually have higher coercivity and high saturation magnetization as compared to polycrystalline materials. Now, such magnets find applications in automobiles, in marine engineering and also in magnetic resonance imaging which is normally called as in short as MRI. Here is the magnetization curve for the nanocrystalline samarium cobalt alloy and this particular alloy is used in high temperature magnets. We now move to the next application of nanomaterials and this application is nothing but high energy batteries. Nanocrystalline materials that are synthesized using the sol gel method have a high degree of porosity and due to this it so happens that they are actually looking like foam and if you are making the batteries, electrodes or the separators using such material then they will store a large amount of charge in that or rather a large amount of energy and due to this there will be no requirement for frequent charging of such kind of batteries. So, this is one of the most important application of a nanomaterial. So, over here we have nano size compounds that is made of lithium and oxygen right that is being used in an improved version of a lithium ion battery. So, once again you can see over here that the foam size or the foam type of property of a nano material is being effectively used to make a highly efficient lithium ion battery. Here is one more application of a nano material and this application is the high sensitivity sensors. Nano materials if at all they are used as sensors are highly sensitive to the changes in the surrounding environment and due to this property they can actually be used to detect first of all the atmospheric pollutants, then smoke detectors as volatile organic compound detectors, ice detectors on spacecrafts and on aircrafts and also as engine performance sensors. Here is an application of a nanocrystalline sensor made out of tin oxide and this is used for the detection of the various volatile organic compounds in the atmosphere. We now move to the next application of nanomaterial and this is nothing but the aerospace components. So, aerospace components made out of nanocrystalline materials or of nanomaterials are stronger, tougher and durable and due to this they become long lasting and not only long lasting 
but they are extremely light in weight, thus enhancing the fuel efficiency of aircrafts. Here is an example of the use of nanomaterials. Nanomaterial coats are used over canopies of fighter aircrafts in order to remove the bubbles which actually cover the entire canopy during high altitudes. Not only that, but if this we are putting conducting nanomaterial paint over the entire aircraft, it actually improves the electromagnetic shielding and not only that, but it also decreases the electrostatic discharge. With this, we have completed part 1 of the application of nanomaterials. I hope you have enjoyed this particular video and learned about the various applications of nanomaterials. Although there are vast number of applications of nanomaterials, we could focus only a few. Sincere thanks for watching this particular video. Thanks a lot.